Rafael Gambrasiudad. Rafael Gambrasiudad, July 21, 1920, January 13, 2004, was a Spanish philosopher, a secondary education official, a Carlist politician and a soldier. In philosophy he is considered key representative of late traditionalism, his works fall also into theory of state and politics. He is best known as author of books focusing on secularization of Western European culture in the consumer society era. As a politician he is acknowledged as a theorist rather than as an active protagonist, though after 2001 he briefly headed one of the Carlist branches. Family and Youth Rafael's paternal ancestors for generations have been related to Valle del Roncal, until today Casa Gambra and Casa Sanz are iconic mansions of the area. The Gambras made their name fighting the French in 1809. Rafael's grandfather, Pedro Francisco Gambra Barena, died in 1930, married descendant to a distinguished Carlos military son's family, himself he rose to high positions in Ministry of Economy. His son and Rafael's father, Eduardo Gambra Sanz, 1878-1964, became an architect. Key Gambra's works are offices of Sociedad Gran Peña along the Gran Via and refurbishment of Palacio del Marques de Miraflores marked by attempt to recapture the splendor of historical Spanish architecture. In 1915 he married Rafael Asiu Dad Villalón, died 1947, born in Seville though raised in Madrid. She came from a distinguished family of civil servants. Her father José Asiu Dad Orioles in the early 20th century was a Cortes deputy, until the early 1920s a long-time senator, and in 1917-1923 served as president of Tribunal Supremo. The couple had only one child. Born and raised in Madrid, Rafael spent much of his childhood in Valle de Roncal and later cherished his Navarrese heritage. In historiography he is referred to as a Navarro rather than as a Madrileño, sometimes dubbed Maestro Navarro, Arquidipo Navarro, Buen Navarro or Vasco Navarro Ronquils. He was brought up in profoundly Catholic ambience, politically his father sympathized with Carlism and his mother, though coming from a liberal family also displayed a conservative penchant. He was first educated at the Madrid Marianist Colegio del Pilar. Already during his schoolboy years he was attracted to letters and read books while his colleagues played football. During his early adolescent years he was engaged in Asociación Católica Nacional de Propagandistas. In July 1936 the Gambras were spending their summer holidays in Runcal, where they were caught by the military coup. As a 16-year-old Rafael volunteered to the Requete unit of Tercio de Abergerza in few days time taking positions at Alto de Leon Pass and attempting to break through Sierra de Guadarrama. José Ulibarri, the Catholic parish priest from Uger and temporary commander of the unit, remained Gamber's friend and sort of mentor for life. He spent the next two years at the stationary front line in the Sierra, until in July 1938 he left to attend Olfera's provisional training. In February 1939 he was seconded to Tercio del Alcazar, commanding a platoon in the 4. Infantry Company. Having reached Iria at the moment of nationalist victory, he was decorated with many military awards. Rafael Gambra was married to Maria del Carmen Gutierrez Sanchez, 1921-1984, translator, scholar and as Miguel Arazuri author of fairly popular novels. She was also the founder and manager of Foundation Stella, an independent radio venture. The couple had three children. Of their two sons, Andres Gambra Gutierrez is professor of medieval history and the university official, while José Miguel Gambra Gutierrez is scholar in philosophy, both in Madrid. The two are active traditionalists, the latter leading the 16-0s Carlists since 2010. Scholarship In 1939 Gambra enrolled at the Faculty of Letters and Philosophy at Universidad Central. Influenced by Manuel García Morente and Salvador Minguijón Adrián, he graduated in 1942. One year later he entered Cuerpo de Catedráticos Numerarios de Institutos Nacionales de Enseñanza Media. Promoted to Inspector Nacional de Enseñanzas Medias, in 1945 Gambra obtained his Ph.D. laurels as Doctor en Filosofía, his thesis dedicated to post-Hegelian approach to historiographic methodology. The work, promoted by Juan Zaragueta y Bengoechea, boiled down to highly critical review centered on Marx and Feuerbach and was published in 1946. Already in the early 1940s Gambra assumed teaching at the Madrid Academia Vasquez de Mella, a semi-official Carlist educational and cultural enterprise, he was giving lectures on traditionalist theory of philosophy, state and politics. In 1943 he moved to Pamplona, where he was employed by Instituto Principe de Viana, a cultural outpost of Carlism managed by the provincial authorities. 
During the next 12 years Gambra served in the Institute as Professor of Philosophy, in the early 1950s apparently hoping to join a would-be Universidad del País Vasco Navarro, a high education establishment advocated at the time. However, when Universidad de Navarra materialized as a private Opus Dei enterprise in 1952, Gamber did not enlist, he rejected also an opportunity to pursue research and possibly scholarship in England. In the mid-1950s he returned to the capital, engaged in governmental attempt to reshape the secondary education structures. He assumed teaching in newly created Centros Modelos de Segunda and Sananza, first in Instituto Miguel de Cervantes and in the mid-1960s moving to Instituto Nacional de Enseñanza Media Lope de Vega, becoming its vice director later on. As education official he was anxious to prevent erosion de la espiritualidad, and in the early 1960s he opposed technocratic changes, proposed and eventually introduced in education. He cooperated also with the Universidad Complutense, particularly with the associated San Pablo Seu College, run by ICT. Gambra continued collaborating with Seu from the mid-1960s to 1994s, also after San Pablo had formally separated from Complutense and became an independent university. Apart from professional engagements, Gambra continued his teaching career also with a number of semi-scholarly institutions. Until the early 1960s Gambra was giving lectures at Ateneo de Madrid, at that time led by Florentino Perez and Bid, and Instituto de Cultura Hispanica, an establishment created by Francoist authorities to cultivate the Latin American link. Dot in the press referred to as Catedratico, he was active in once-off conferences, also beyond Madrid, and in periodical Catholic cultural scientific initiatives, like Conversaciones Intelectuales de El Polar or sessions organized by Hermandad Sacerdotal. In the mid-1960s he commenced engagement in Madrid-based Centro de Estudios Históricos y Políticos Generales de Malacargui, a think tank set up to disseminate traditionalist thought and counter-progressist designs on Carlism. In the late 1960s he stood as a recognized authority, at least within the traditionalist realm. He continued giving lectures in the 1980s, as late as 1989 and 1992. In 1998 he celebrated 50 years of teaching. Thought in terms of general inspiration Gambra is broadly defined as fitting within the Platonic tradition but indebted mostly to St. Thomas Aquinas and occasionally referred to as member of the Neoscholastic school. His views on Christianity were influenced by Gustav Tibbon, Etienne Gilson, Romano Gardini and partially Max Scheler. He is also often referred to as embracing philosophic threads of Albert Camus and other French existentialists, while in theory of politics and state following Alexis de Tocqueville. Carl von Vogelsang and especially Juan Vasquez de Mella. The principal thread of Gamber's thought is repudiation of rationalism-based civilization and promotion of a traditionalist outlook. Human life is understood as commitment to divine order and human identity is spanned between known self and community belonging. A man is perceived primarily as a social, not autonomous, being, expressed mostly by his role in society. Similarly, life is about contributing to common good, incompatible with individualism or liberalism. The society itself is governed by nature, animality and rationality, though religion as a transcendent factor is indispensable element of social equation. Such a polity is best expressed as a society of duties, united by common purpose and religious inspiration. As he believed a public organization not based on accepted orthodoxy can never be stable, leading to mere coexistence rather than community, Gambra advocated public embracement of the doctrine with respect for privately held heterodoxy. According to Gambra social self of a human is best expressed by tradition, viewed as accumulated and irreversible evolution that provides a principle governing historical societies and incompatible with revolutionary patterns of change. In case of Spain the tradition is embodied in hereditary monarchy as opposed to elective heads of state, federative structure as opposed to unitary nation states, organic representation as opposed to corruption prone and individual centered parliamentarian democracy. Catholic orthodoxy as opposed to secular or neutral regime and generally withdrawn admin structures as opposed to modern, omnipotent state. Politically the guardian of such a tradition was Carlism, not merely political grouping or romantic sentiment but rather the very essence of Spanish self. Recurring threat of Gambra's thought, by some considered its key component, was confronting modern format of religiosity. He held Maritain and Teilhard de Chardin responsible for undermining Christianity and turning it into a new humanist religion, admitting defeat in 150-year-old struggle against secular revolution. Dot fiercely critical of Vaticanum II he considered Dignitatis Humanae incompatible with tradition, the innovative effort of Vatican producing demolition of Christianity and reduction of Catholic integrity to mere Christian inspiration. Indeed, he is often referred to as an integrist. 
Faced with progressist stance of the church, Gambra started assuming anti-clerical positions from the far-right perspective. He often combined his critique with onslaught on European idea, considered a euphemism denoting a militant, anti-Christian ideology, and opposed its implementation in Spain. He was not that much anti-democratic as rather opposing deification of democracy, and especially the central if not exclusive position it claimed within public space. Works Most popular Gambra's works were textbooks in History of Philosophy, Historia Sencia de la Filosofía, 1961, and Curso Elemental de Filosofía, 1962, tailored for the beginners, they were reprinted in countless editions and served as immensely popular introductions to philosophy for generations of Spanish students until the early 21st century. The first edition of Curso was nominally co-authored by Gustavo Bueno, in the subsequent reruns the publisher dropped Bueno, who after the fall of Francoism claimed that the result of his own labor had been merely re-edited by Gambra. In 1970 these works were supplemented by La Filosofia Católica and El Siglo XX. Gambra's view on theory of society and state was laid out in three works, his PhD dissertation La Interpretación Materialista de la Historia, 1946, La Monarquia Social y Representativa en el Pensamiento Tradicional, 1954, and ESOK Yamanistado, 1958. La Monarquia, together with almost simultaneously published similar work of Elias de Tejada, became a cornerstone of traditionalist theoretical vision. While ESOK Yaman was widely discussed in the press of the era, both earned Gambra prestigious standing in scholarly discourse. The works which made most impact among the wide public were four books focusing on contemporary culture, La Unidad Religiosa y el Deritismo Católico, 1965, El Silencio de Dios, 1967, Tradiciono Mimetismo, 1976, and El Languaje y los Mitos, 1983. Dot the first two centered on secularization of Western polities, they confronted Christian democratic vision and Vatican II alike, explored roots of perceived cultural decline, tried to redefine tradition versus progress and strove to demonstrate how multifold advances of the last centuries have given man a false sense of mastery. Tradicion turned dramatically out of tune with the transition spirit, withdrawn by the editor and distributed by the author himself. Finally, El Languaje deconstructed modern communication, its objective was to prove that the progressist tide manipulated the language and turned it from means of communication into means of promoting cultural revolution. Apart from translations, booklets, compilations and single though some of them original historical attempts, most of 775 titles in digitalized version of Gamber's writings, released in 2002, are contributions to reviews and daily press. Since the 1940s Gambra was moderately engaged in Calvos or directed Arbor. Later he switched to La Ciudad Católica, turned into Verbo, unofficial review of the Spanish integrists, contributing also to other Catholic titles like Tradición Católica or conservative ones like Adenio. He supplied a number of Carlist reviews and bulletins, Siempre Palante, La Santa Casa, Monte Jura and Azeda y Asta, gradually eradicated from the last two by their progressist management. Through many decades he was key author of El Pensamiento Navarro. During late Francoism and afterwards he collaborated with El Alcazar and Fuerza Nueva. In the 1990s and later he appeared in nationwide press mostly as author of letters to the editor, his last item identified is from 2003. In the 1950s he engaged in private Carlist ventures editorial Calamo and Edición as Monte Jura. Carlist, Confronting Franco. Released from the Carlist Requeta unit, during academic years in Madrid Gambra engaged in the traditionalist academia Vasquez de Mella. In the increasingly fragmented realm of post-war Carlism, headed by vacillating and hardly contactable regent Don Javier, he seemed leaning towards a candidature of Dom Duarte Nuno, the two had an amicable interview in 1941, but the young Gambra stayed within the limits of loyalty to the regent and eventually abandoned his pro-Braganza penchant converted to supporter of the Bourbon Parmas. Died having moved to Navarre in 1943 he assisted the French monarchists from fleeing the Nazi terror across the Pyrenees into Spain. In the late 1940s he gained weight within Navarre's Carlism. In the early 1950s he was already listed among dirigents locales Houtinian and El País Vasco Navarro una indubitable influencia. In 1953 he formally entered Honda Provincial. Since emergence of pro-Francoist Carlo de Vista branch in the mid-1940s Gambra was increasingly anxious about protracted regency of Don Javier. Uncompromising towards another collaborative branch, the Rodesnistas, in the early 1950s he concluded that Don Javier should reinvigorate the movement by terminating the regency and declaring his own claim to the throne. When this eventually happened in 1952, 
Gebra was co-author of Octo de Barcelona, a proclamation issued by the pretender and viewed also as major redefinition of the Carlist dynastical reading. Books on traditionalist monarchy established his firm position as a recognized party theorist. In 1954 he entered subcommission of culture within Comisión de Cultura e Propaganda of the Carlist executive, Junta Nacional. When discussing the mid-1950s some authors count him among the immovilistas, non-collaborative followers of Manuel Fil, while others scholars suggest he charged full with lack of intransigence and together with other Navarros like the Bales Tena brothers he opposed him from even more anti-Francoist positions. Once Carlism changed its strategy towards cautious rapprochement, Gember stuck to his guns and lambasted the official collaborationist path of the new leader, José María Baliente. Uneasy about continuous vacillation of Don Javier, Gembra was cautiously supportive of inviting his son Don Carlos Hugo into the Spanish politics, he first met him in 1955 and though perplexed by unfamiliarity of the Francophone prince with the Spanish affairs, it was Gembra who introduced him at the 1957 Carlist gathering at Montijara. In the late 1950s Gambra appreciated his energetic style and focus on dynastic loyalty, he also liked young personalities from Don Carlos Hugo's entourage, especially Ramon Masso a former Gambra's disciple from Academia Vasquez de Mella. Dot appreciating him as a young Catalan easily communicating with the crowd, at the turn of the decades Gambra collaborated with Masso and others, he did not realize that they exploited Mellist and Federalist threads but considered him a rotten reactionary and approached his teaching highly selectively. It was only in the early 1960s that Gambra realized that Hugo Carlistas tried to outsmart the traditionalists, having failed to prevent their increased presence in the party structures, Around 1963 Gamber dissociated himself from Carlo Hugismo to launch an open and confrontational bid. Carlist, Confronting Progress In 1963 Gamber co-founded Centro de Estudios Históricos y Políticos General Zumala Cargui, though affiliated with Movimiento Nacional, it was intended as a think tank disseminating traditionalism and countering progressist vision of the Hugo Carlistas. Apart from publications and minor events, its activity climaxed in two congresos de estudios tradicionalistas, staged in 1964 and 1968. As supporters of Don Carlos Hugo were gaining momentum, Gamber was leaning towards rapprochement among all Carlist branches separated from the party during the last 20 years, Rodesnistas, Carlotivistas, Chivatistas and the recently expulsed politicians like José Luis Zamanillo or Francisco Elias de Tejada. Parking dynastical issues they were supposed to be united by loyalty to traditionalist principles and opposition to socialist penchant. The plan did not work out until the early 1970s, it is until emergence of ephemeral structure styled as ex requete organization. Gamber's efforts of the time were mostly about further refinement of traditionalist thought in specialized reviews and conferences, they climaxed in KSL Carlismo. 1971, concise lecture of the doctrine co-authored with de Tejada and Pui Munoz. Also in the mid-1970s he was very engaged in propaganda war with the Hugo Carlistas. The latter lambasted his accord with ultra-fascist line of El Pensamiento Navarro and his position Ultramontana, Gambra mobilized traditionalists to challenge progressist grip on Carlism and prior to the 1976 Montijara gathering, which effectively produced fatal casualties, called for asistencia masiva de los verdaderos traditionalistas, que alcalar hastos y voces, declaraciones y manifiestos sencillamente inadmissibles, intolerables. Dot. During final years of Francoism and during Transicion Gambra, always opposed to Falongism and Francoism, neared the post-Francoist bunker when confronting the change, voicing against the 1978 constitution, he sided with Blas Pinar's Fuerza Nueva until the party was dissolved in 1982. Embittered by ongoing change he tried to confront it in newspapers, he compared the setting of late Transicion to that of the mid-1930s, when Spain was struggling infected with deadly political viruses. He remained on the sidelines of politics, when mushrooming traditionalist grouplets united in Comunión Tradicionalista Carlista in 1986 Gambra focused rather on youth Carlist organizations, his spotlight on cultural heritage and education. His objective was to promote traditionalist values in the increasingly secular, modern consumer Spanish society. In the late 1980s and the early 1990s Gambra was considered supreme authority on theory of traditionalism. This was acknowledged during homage celebrations organized in 1998, though formal recognition came three years later. In 2001 Don Sixto, the younger son of Don Javier styled as a banderado de la tradición, though falling short either of claiming the throne or even claiming the Carlist regency, nominated Gambra chief of his Secretaria Politica. 
Not all the traditionalists recognized Gamber's authority, the Carloque de Vistas and Communion Traditionalista Carlista, not admitting allegiance to any dynastical line, dissociated themselves from the nomination. Assuming political leadership of the Sixtinos Carlists, the 81-year-old considered his elevation another cross to bear, though as an octogenarian Gamber remained fairly active, his last public appearance took place during the Cerro de los Angeles feast in 2002. Reception and Legacy Gambra emerged as a notable traditionalist theorist in the mid-1950s. In the late 1960s he was already a recognized authority within the movement and beyond, with first homage sessions organized in 1968, at that time his books on culture and Christianity earned him name also among wider national audience. With the commencing transition of the late 1970s his works went out of fashion up to the point of withdrawing them from bookstores. Following the 1983 publication of El Languaje y Los Mitas he started to disappear from public discourse, publishing either in specialized reviews or partisan press titles. Within traditionalism he grew to an iconic figure, honored by 1998 homage session and a monograph by Miguel Ayuso, published the same year. Though he gained a number of prizes, all of them were awarded by conservative institutions. His 2004 death was noted by some though not all nationwide newspapers and acknowledged by monographic issue of Analyst de Fundación Francisco Elias de Tejada. Taxonomy of Gamber's work is unclear. Today he is usually vaguely referred to as Thinker, an application used also by the Spanish press during his lifetime, alternating with Publicista, Catedrónico, Profesor or Enseísta. When it comes to detailed designation his work is usually classified as philosophy though some see it as part of historiography or political science. Died in general Spanish encyclopedias he usually merits very brief notes. Some philosophy dedicated dictionaries ignore him, some just mention his name and in few he is treated at length. In some manuals he appears in entries dealing with traditionalism, though featured as a secondary theorist who failed to provide original contribution and was rather a renovator of earlier thought. As a historian by some he is denied sound credentials, counted among pseudo-scientific historiography and neo-traditionalista, others challenge this approach. As education official he is considered opponent of modernizing technocratic changes. He is sometimes counted among members of Generación de 1948. Within traditionalism Gamber remains one of the all-time greats. His opus is applauded as grand contribution, a synthesis and a holistic cosmovisión católica y española, though few authors consider his input an update rather than an original contribution. Gamber's followers see him as pensador traditionalista contemporaneo más importante, esencia del traditionalismo or even el más grande y el más fiel filósofo español de la segunda mitad del siglo XX, himself and counter-revolution being one and the same thing. Dot however, also within the traditionalist realm he found some of his concepts, especially his intransigence, challenged, like in case of a 2003 polemics with Alvaro Dors. During the 2014 conference on traditionalism Gambra was dedicated one paper and featured prominently in a number of others, apart from that, both his sons acted as speakers. In the 2015 synthesis of traditionalist thought he is the second, after Elias de Tejada, most featured author. Some of Gambra's essay books are being republished, especially El Silencio de Dios enjoyed a number of editions and was translated into French and English. A new book was released posthumously. Works translation released posthumously. Works translation released posthumously. Works translation released posthumously.